Hey everybody, Ethan here from WordTech, back with another video for you guys. I know it's been a while. I am working on up in the production uh, uh, frequency, so hopefully you guys will start to see more stuff. But uh, anyway, uh, welcome back for those of you that actually have been following the channel and are, are, are watching this video. Um, so I've got a big personal rig update for you guys today, and it's actually a, one of the biggest I've done in a long time. And uh, I just recently did a slightly bigger one, which I'm going to mention first before I get into the rest of the additives, which obviously you can see some of the water cooling parts here. Um, but I actually did a bigger upgrade a couple weeks back and I tried to film some footage of it, but I was really disappointed with uh, the way everything turned out uh, in terms of the video quality and stuff like that. So I decided to scrap that video. So I'll just mention this in here. So this, this is my main machine for uh, editing videos, doing virtualization, playing games, all that kind of stuff. Um, it's a beast. It's got 128 gigs of RAM, uh, two 1080 Ti's, an SLI, a 1070 as well. Um, there's also a secondary rig down here which will be getting moved into another case. I'll mention that here in a minute. Um, but the big upgrade that happened, and you might not even be able to tell from the video unless you've been a longtime follower of the channel, um, is I managed to get a hold of a Threadripper 3 3970X. Now, I did get one on launch day. Uh, Newegg, I, I stayed up all night looking for them, uh, refreshing and refreshing the pages, trying to purchase one. And uh, Newegg ended up having a few, but they had a few while I was driving to work that day, of course. Uh, and so I was pretty disappointed, thought I wouldn't get one, and then I got notified from them that they had another one in stock, and I managed to order it. I believe it was one. I don't think they had a set of them, um, and it, it showed up. And then I also got a hold of the Oris TRX40 Extreme, which is a just beautiful, absolute beast of a board. I love the thing. So pretty stoked on that. The performance of it has been absolutely ridiculous. I hit 17,000 points in Cinebench R20. Um, just totally, totally happy with this build. Um, I'll throw in some B-roll over here for you guys. But uh, um, now I've got even more upgrades going into this machine, as well as some future plans, which we'll talk about uh, more at the end of the video. So first things first, before I actually cover the water cooling, is uh, I have a big solid state storage upgrade going into this, which is gonna be for uh, video editing. So I've got four 512 gig XPG, um, I think it's XPG, right? Yeah, XPG drives uh, from ADATA going into this machine. Uh, they'll be in RAID 0, and that's going to be so two terabytes of RAID 0 storage that will be for video editing and uh, other application acceleration and stuff like that, um, which this board does support for PCIe 4.0 by 4 M.2s. These are only 3.0, but the pricing was so good because Newegg had a huge sale on them. I mean, between me and my friends, we ordered like 15 of them. Uh, just amazing drives for the price. They are TLC, but they have a pretty good SLC cache on them. And uh, even then with RAID 0, the sequential should be good enough for what I'm doing. I think the performance will be good. I'm really hoping. <laughs> uh, if it's not, then I will probably have to use them for something else and get proper uh, MLC or SLC drives for doing this kind of workload. But uh Figure to give it a shot, see how it goes. So that's one of the big upgrades here, but then obviously you can see there's some water cooling parts on the table here as well. One of the things I learned after installing this 3970X here is this Noctua NH-U14S TR4 edition is having trouble keeping up. So AMD on their site claims that the max temperature that you should see with this chip is 68 degrees. That's the highest you should let it go. Um, I didn't actually see any thermal throttling. However, the boosts were lower uh, into the higher um, ranges up to about 80 degrees Celsius. My cooler tends to keep it uh, between 65 and 75 depending on the workload although I haven't done a ton of rendering on it yet so I'm a little nervous about that although doing a lot of Cinebench runs it hit like 80 degrees so it was still kind of within that okay this is maybe okay for a little while mark but considering it's a two thousand dollar chip I really don't want to damage it and so I decided you know what I just have to do the water cooling uh, so I'm only doing the CPU right now I'm not doing the rest of everything on here eventually the idea is to add in all three GPUs um, uh, obviously the CPU hopefully the VRMs if a full cover block comes out from EK for this uh, so there's there's future videos coming but that's going to be later in the future, hopefully after new GPUs come out and stuff like that. So this is just the CPU loop for the time being. This is my first time doing a loop, and my 2019 New Year's resolution was to do a loop. So I'm getting this done before 2019. You guys might not see the video until 2020, but um, pretty stoked. I've been studying water cooling for a long time. Um, so I actually know a decent amount about it, even though I don't have direct experience with it. Uh, and so I, I don't think I forgot anything. Uh, I've already cleaned out the radiator with uh, hot water and uh, vinegar, so that's all good to go. And it's been flushed with distilled water a whole bunch. Uh, I got lots of fittings along with a drain port. We've got a uh, X-Res 140, I think this is. Uh, P yeah, X-Res 100 with a D5 PWM uh, pump and sleeve cables and everything. So that will be getting mounted 
back there. Uh, pretty excited for that. I've got the, the uh, reservoir specific mount for this case uh, that I can use that on. Um, I've got the EK Quantum uh, water block for TRX40. Well, it's the TR4 edition, but they're the same exact socket layout and IHS, so it'll work fine. Um, tons and tons of tubing here because who knows if I'm gonna mess this up or not. So I wanted to have extra tubing. I've got the fill bottle um, and then I've got the purple fluid to kind of go with the purple theme in my area over there. Um, so pretty excited. I bought quite a bit of fluid. I hope this is enough. I think it's more than enough, but I wasn't 100% sure. So I just, I ordered extras in case. I've also got a ton of distilled water uh, cause I'm gonna flush the whole loop again, uh, even though I've already done the radiator after I assemble everything. So I'm gonna be pumping probably a half gallon of distilled water through there first. Um, and then the build will be together. All right, everybody, I'm back. As you can probably tell by the shirt, it is a new day. It may be from the same show, but it's a different color. Um, so I let this leak test overnight with distilled water just to make sure everything was solid. Uh, and then I drained it today, which 
I mean, I don't know. I feel weird about leak testing with distilled water instead of the fluid that you're actually going to use. Uh, it's something that some people seem to recommend, but uh, I had mixed feelings about it from the get-go because in order to properly drain a loop, you usually have to take off some tubes to get all of that distilled water out of there. I got probably 96, 97% of it out of there. Uh, there was a little bit left in uh, the CPU block, but the radiator seemed to be completely empty before I put this in. So I'm pretty comfortable with that, but it's like if you have to take the tubes off or any of the fittings off, then is the leak testing really worth it? Um, but anyway, at least I know none of the fittings or have failed gaskets or anything like that, of course. So there's ups and downs. So I'm still letting it lead test right here with the actual Indigo Violet, uh, EK cryo fuel in it, which it took about, um, a little more than half a liter. Uh, so it was, I, I got two liter bottles of it. So I have extra just in case it has a two year shelf life. So when I drain this in six months, I have more to put in there. Uh, I'm really, really happy with it overall though. It's very quiet. Um, you know, we'll see how the cooling performance goes. I'll probably have numbers for that in another video or something like that because uh, it's going to be a while before I get this thing back up and um, I'm going to be taking down all the filming equipment and stuff like that. So I don't know if I'll get everything out again to do that. Maybe. We'll see. Maybe there'll be a little spot at the end. Um, and of course, I showed you guys some B-roll of this just a moment ago and uh, I'm, I'm really happy with the looks of it. I like the layout of the loop. Uh, I do wish I got a bigger reservoir, but... I may not have mentioned it earlier. There's a little bit of a story behind that. So the original plan with this build was to uh, use just the 1600 watt power supply, AX 1600i I have in here to power both the guest ITX rig and my main machine in this case. And by using just the single PSU, I was gonna have enough room for enough radiators to do two loops. Uh, I was gonna liquid cool both of them. But I found out that the power splitters out there are really, really, really hard. By that, I mean basically impossible to come by and they've uh, caught some people's systems on fire and broken boards and stuff like that. Not a risk I wanna take with this. So I'm actually gonna to have to remove the guest rig entirely uh, because there's not enough room for the radiators for everything with just the one power supply in here for two loops or with the two power supplies in here for two loops because one of the rads was gonna go down here. So um, that's the reasoning for the tiny little reservoirs. The original plan when I ordered all the parts for this was to eventually use that pump combo unit for the, um, the guest rig specific loop and it was gonna be mounted underneath here on top of a rad. But um, now it's, it's probably just gonna be put for another loop somewhere in my HGPC or something when I get a bigger reservoir for this, which will happen when new GPUs are out and stuff like that. So we're, we're a ways off of that. Um, but like I said, overall, I'm really, really happy with it. I've got a little cable work to do in the back because obviously the cables can kind of be seen through here. I don't know how well that picks up on camera, but I'm gonna have to organize those cables a little better because there used to be a full cover there. So you couldn't see the cables that were mounted there. So thank you everybody for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment, uh, especially you pro water coolers out there. Let me know how much of a uh, idiot I was when putting this together, what I, what I did wrong. I hope I didn't do anything wrong. I've been planning water cooling loops for a very long time. I've just never uh, dumped the money into actually doing it. So uh, I think I didn't miss anything. Um, I've got the drain port and everything, which works pretty well, but not as well as I'd actually hoped. So maybe I could have put the drain port in a little bit better of a position to get more of that liquid out of there. But uh, overall, very happy. And finally, something to keep that 3970X cooled off because that thing just gets so hot with air cooling and I wanna be able to enable precision boost overdrive and stuff like that to get a little bit better uh, gaming performance out of this. So uh, pretty, pretty stoked to try that out. Anyway, thank you again everybody for watching and uh, I hope you all have a wonderful new year or had a wonderful new year. I'm not sure when I'm uploading this. So anyway, talk to you guys later.